To really put this e-ink display to the test, I placed it side by side with an actual sheet of paper. I wanted to see if it truly behaves like paper in every way. So I switched off the room light and I was completely shocked. Today, I've got something really exciting on my disk. The Image ESP32 S3 with a 4.2 inch triple color e-ink display. This is not your everyday screen. Unlike LCDs or OLEDs, this display works just like printed paper. In this video, I will take you through the hardware, the display specs and its features. We will also test it with some cool examples to see how it performs in real projects. So if you are into low power displays or want something that looks sharp and clear even in sunlight, then stick around. This one is going to be fun. So without any further delay, let's get started. Now, let's take a closer look at the board itself and go through the different interfaces. Up here, we have the I2C connector, which is useful if I want to connect external sensors or expansion modules that use the I2C protocol. Next to it is the GPIO header. This gives me access to general purpose pins from the ESP32 S3 so I can connect LEDs, relays, or other peripherals. Then we have got two USB ports USB TTL and USB native. The USB TTL is mainly for programming and debugging through serial communication, while the USB native can be used for direct USB functions since the ESP32 S3 supports native USB. Right beside that, there is the battery connector. You can plug in a LiPo battery here to make the board portable, which is really handy for low power e ink projects. On the right side, we have the SD card slot. This allows us to store images fonts or other large data files that can be displayed on the e-ink screen. At the center, of course, is the USB 32 S3 chip, the brain of this board. It's a dual-core microcontroller with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built-in, and it's powerful enough to handle graphics and wireless communication at the same time. Down here, we have two buttons, switch 1 and switch 2. These are user-programmable, so we can assign them to any function we like, for example, refreshing the screen or changing the display mode, or we can use it to activate and deactivate the sleep mode. At the bottom, there are also the flash and reset buttons. Reset simply restarts the board, while flash is used for putting the ESP32 into programming mode if needed. And finally, we have the SPI interface for the e-ink display connection. This is the high-speed communication channel between the ESP32 S3 and the display itself. This is a 4.2 inch e-ink panel with a resolution of 400 by 300 pixels. It can show black, white and red. One interesting thing is that a full refresh takes about 15 seconds. But the big advantage is super low power consumption. Once the image is on the screen, it stays there without using almost any power. And here's the part that really blew my mind. Even after I disconnected the power, the image on the display was still clearly visible. That's the beauty of e-ink technology. It doesn't need constant power to keep the image on screen. Of course, if you're using this board with sensors or other peripherals, then you will need to keep it powered with a battery. But for just displaying information, this feature is absolutely amazing. It makes the display super energy efficient and perfect for low power projects. Now, of course, there are a lot of more detailed specs like the exact dimensions, pixel pitch, temperature ranges, and so on. If you are interested in those, read the article on my website and you can also check it out on the product's official page. After this, you can head over to the MakerFabe's official GitHub repository. Just make sure you see ESP32 S3 4.2 e-ink and download the entire zip folder. Inside this folder, you will find everything you need for this project. In the example folder, there are four ready-to-use examples, which we will be testing in a moment. In the hardware folder, you even get the original PCB design file, schematic, and PDFs. It's completely open source, and that's one of the reasons I really like Megafabe. They provide everything to their users, so you are not left guessing or stuck without resources. To make things easier, they have also provided a little tool called Image to LCD. With this software, you can convert any picture or text into the right format for the e-ink display. Basically, you load your image adjust the settings and it gives you the byte air that you can use directly in your code. 
If you like designing your own graphics, you can create images in Photoshop or any other photo editor, save them and then either convert them with the image to LCD software or just copy them straight to the SD card. That way you get full control over how your images look on the display. In the libraries folder, we also get the SP32 WaveShare EPD library. This one isn't pre-installed in Arduino, so we will need to add it manually. Let's go ahead and do that now. Open the Arduino IDE, go to the sketch menu, include library, 8.zip library, and then select the library zip folder. As you can see, I have already installed this library, so I'm going to click on the no button. Before we start, let me quickly share my software setup. Right now, I'm using Arduino IDE version 2.3.4 and the ESP32 Borg package version 2.0.11. All of my recent touch display projects have been done with the same versions and they have worked smoothly. So if you want to follow along without running into errors, I recommend using the same setup. Now let's go ahead and test all four examples one by one. So you can see how this display actually performs. And once we are done with these, we will also create our own simple interface in Photoshop just to display a numeric value on the screen. That way you will see how easy it is to design your own custom graphics and push them to the display. Anyways, let's now open the ebook examples folder. Inside this folder, you will find the main Arduino.ino file along with a simple txt file. You can write anything you want inside this text file. Whatever you type here will be printed on the e-ink display. Once you are done writing, just copy this file and paste it onto the SD card. Some of the examples also use images and to save time, I have already copied those images onto the SD card as well. Now, let's insert the SD card into the slot, connect the e-ink display to the laptop and open up the ebook Arduino file to get started. To upload the program, here is what you need to do. First, go to the tools menu, board, ESP32 and select ESP32 S3 dev module. Go back to the tools menu, port and choose the correct communication port. Again, go to the tools menu, flash size and select 16 MB. And one last time, go to tools menu, PSRAM and select OPI PSRAM. Once these settings are done, you can simply click the upload button. Same settings will be required for all the example programs we will test. As you can see, the program has been successfully uploaded. When I first saw this output, I honestly felt like I was flipping through a notebook. The text sits there naturally with no flicker and no light shining at me. Unlike an LCD or OLED, this display doesn't fight with your eyes. It just feels calm, like reading from a sheet of paper. That's the real beauty of e-ink. And when I press the button on the right side, it scrolls through pages seamlessly with the current page number. To really put this e-ink display to the test, I placed it side by side with an actual sheet of paper. I wanted to see if it truly behaves like paper in every way. So I switched off the room light and I was completely shocked. Both the real paper and the e-ink display completely disappeared into the darkness. Nothing visible at all. Then the moment I turned the light back on, both came back to life. Honestly, it felt like I was looking at two sheets of paper, one digital and one real. That's how close this display is to real paper. Now, let's go ahead and quickly test the remaining three examples. Let's go ahead and upload this program. This example displays a QR code on the display. I have already saved this image onto the SD card. This looks amazing. I scanned it and it opened the MakerFapes website link. Now, let's test this fourth example. This example also displays image on the e-ink display. I have already uploaded this program, so let's watch this in action. This example is actually my modified version of the fourth example. I created a custom image for it in Photoshop 
make sure to stick to black, white and red colors. The white area is where we will display the numbers. Later, you can modify the code to show actual sensor values here. Once your design is ready, save it as a .pmp file. This is my final image and I have already saved it to the SD card. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked this episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode and thanks for watching.